Members, the ayes are 61, the noes are 60. Schedule 5 will stand part. The question now is that clauses 1 and 2 stand part. I call Chris Farford. Mr Chair, um, thank you very much to have a... Uh um, discussion around uh, clauses one and two, the title uh, and commencement uh, clauses uh, to the standards uh, and accreditation bill. Mr Chair, this is an opportunity when we can seek alternative titles uh, to the bill that's being debated and a, a very simple change uh, to the bill as, as it is and, that, and we just change it to the lower standards and accreditation bill because it, that's exactly uh, what this bill does. It does lower the standards and accreditation of New Zealand's processes around this, not just in the eyes of the people who practitioned here in New Zealand, but also in the eyes of the international community, Mr Chair, which it should be of major concern to this government, um, but seemingly has th th they don't seem to care about that because, Mr Chair, a number of people uh, and organisations came to the Select Committee and made that very point, that if we change the structure of, of our um, standards and accreditation process, that New Zealand would be looked in much dimmer views. Uh, in terms of our international reputation around standards and accreditation. You would have thought, Mr Chair, that the government would have taken that on board because it wasn't just one or two of the around a dozen and a half uh, submissions that, we, that came to us. It was a very strong vein of uh, opposition and concern uh, around our international reputation. And um, you would have thought that the members on that uh, committee would have taken that feedback uh, to the minister and said, um, Minister, we think we've got a problem here. Um, we've got all these people with much more experience than us in the industry um, who actually do this day in, day out, and they say it's a bad idea. Do you think we should do something about it? Um, but no, they didn't do that, Mr Chair. They, they, they completely and utterly ignored the submissions from those submitters. Uh, like the Building Industry Federation, uh, who I don't think we should ignore, to be frank, and uh, uh, many other submitters who are mainly around the construction industry, um, who, who have serious concerns ar around what the government is doing. A and their submissions were that if we do this, things will get worse. So my alternative uh, um, title for the bill should be the lower standards uh, and accreditation bill. Now, Mr Chair, these aren't just my words. I'm not just being in opposition for opposition's sakes. No. Which do you think the government will, will surely take? A, a, they'll, have a, they'll have a shot at us about that. Why are you guys being so negative? You always oppose everything. Well, that's not the case in this case, Mr Chair. It, it, there, there, were, there were many submitters who came to us who made the point that I have been talking about. Uh, one of them, Mr Chair, um, that I did want to, um, again, uh, quote from her submission was Diane Bagley, who's been a member of the Joint New Zealand-Australia Committee around standards since 1995. A, a long time, 20 years. 20 years is a long time to be an expert in something. And so when Diane Bagley turned up, we just... We should have been paying... Well, we were paying attention, but it seems that the members on the opposite side of the House and their select committee didn't really care about Diane's 20 years of experience and expertise uh, around standards, because she did have concerns around lowering standards uh, through this bill. Mr Chair, to quote Diane Bagley, who, who I think is a submitter who spent her New Year's Day putting her submission together, which I think is a, a commitment to the cause, she says, I do not consider that the provisions set out for the establishment of the standards function within, the, within MB, which is the loss of independence which we're talking about, she, she went on to say she doesn't think that that standards function within MB can adequately control the risks associated with a new structure, whether to the management of standards development or the reputation of New Zealand in the international standards community. Now, when someone with you know, 20 years more experience than me uh, in, in the standards uh, um, sector says that, I think we should listen to that. We think the government should have listened to that, and maybe the, the minister and the chair would like to take a call as to why he didn't listen to that and why his party didn't listen to that, therefore lowering the standards of the, of the standards and accreditation process here in New Zealand. Diane didn't stop there, Mr Chair. She went on to say more uh, around this piece of legislation. She said, the model proposed in the bill, if realised, might even be used as an example by countries by which countries without robust government systems with undesirable results make, might take advantage of New Zealand. She goes on to say, New Zealand is, is well respected. She may, she may use that in the past tense now. New Zealand is well respected in the international standards community. And an argument can be made that um, other countries may say, well, if New Zealand does it this way, why don't we do it this way? And that could be influential. Mr Chair, um, 
Diane Bagley is, is directly saying that because we do this and we've got a good reputation, other countries who don't have such a good reputation may say, well, you know, look at New Zealand. They have been the shining light, have, past tense, Mr Chair. So, Mr Chair? Chris Farford. Thank you. They have been the shining light. So why don't we do what they do? If they don't think independence is important anymore, then we'll do it too. And Mr Chair, we don't think that's the kind of example that New Zealand should be setting. We want to make sure that our systems are robust, they continue to be looked upon by the international community as some of the best, if not the best. Uh, but the changes within this bill, Mr Chair, we think lower the standards, and which is why I, I offered up a, a, a cheeky, well, not too cheeky, um, um, alternative um, uh, title to the bill. Uh, alternative, alternative. A good alternative that you should take, because there's, uh, I think it more accurately de describes the bill as it stands at the moment. Mm. Mr Chair, it wasn't just Diane Bagley, it was other submitters who, who had concerns around the lowering of standards, uh, and also, Mr Chair, around an amount of political influence that now could come in uh, to the setting of standards. Uh, and it was the Building Industry Federation, who I extensively quoted earlier uh, in um, the committee stage, who said, and uh, quite simply in one sentence, that standard setting should not be subject to direct political influence by the government of the day. We, we, we couldn't agree with them more. And why the government ignored that, I don't know. Maybe the Minister, the Chair, who I think has taken the time to answer some of the questions um, uh, in, uh, that we've posed, might take um, a call in this late stages of the Committee of the Whole House to answer some of the questions uh, that we've posed here. Mr Chair, um, it is lowering standards because the Minister in that um, contribution that I mentioned earlier said one of the problems that he is trying to solve was a lack of visibility for the New Zealand Standards Council, which for a short period of time will continue to be the body that looks after um, uh, standards uh, in New Zealand. Um, his novel approach to curing the visibility problem that he pointed out was to put the new body within the Uber ministry run by Stephen Joyce, the Ministry of Business, uh, Innovation and Employment. Now, from my reckoning, taking a small independent body that lacks visibility and putting that within a ministry that has eaten six other ministries, has thousands of, 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 uh, of employees, can't seem to spend money wisely, Mr Chair, is not the right solution to that problem. If you want something to be more visible, you don't put on camouflage, Mr Chair. So I think the Minister might want to revisit his thinking behind that, because to me, that doesn't make sense. If you want something to be more visible, as you, as you know, Mr Chair, health and safety is very important, something that we all um, think is important. You put something on more high-vis, so you can stand out. But in this case, the, the, the solution to a visibility problem is putting on camouflage and putting yourself within a ministry that has, as I say, has taken on so much responsibility it can't control itself. Title and commencement. So, Mr, Mr Chair, the, lowering, the lower standards uh, and accreditation bill should be the title of this piece of legislation. This government has lowered standards because it hasn't taken on a lot of the recommendations that have come through the select committee process. To keep independence, to make sure that there is a, a, a viable financial model to make sure that we do address the issue of whether or not um, that we can um, properly cost and fund uh, the standards process. Mr Chair, this is a, another example of the government trying to solve a problem, and it's not solved the problem it's trying to solve, it's actually created others. Um, so we will watch this very closely, Mr Chair, as to whether or not uh, our predictions of uh, our international reputation um, being even more dimly viewed in the, by the international community will come to fruition. We believe it will. And I would like to say to the government, you were warned by about 19 submitters who all said the same thing. You know, this lack of independence will lead to our international reputation being affected. So in the end, Mr Chair, we will have lower standards and our standards and accreditation processes. It's a missed opportunity for the, for the government to have done something properly, uh, and it is a real wasted opportunity, Mr Chair. Thank you very much.